The Hidden Lore of Season of Discovery. Season of Discovery, there's lots of new content, but with it, they've also introduced new lore within the Classic WoW universe, yeah. along with mysterious implications and call forwards to lore that will occur in the future events of Warcraft. Now, okay. I won't be going over every new tidbit of lore introduced, but I will be going into the stories that interest me the most. Mm -hmm. Starting off with murder. Okay. Um. Within the desolate fields of Desolus, players can stumble upon a crime scene. Mm. Here they find two dead humans and a dwarf. Their wounds and the absence of their belongings suggest that this oh, yeah. was not done by a wild animal. During yeah. their investigation, players question a nearby goblin, Bibli Futzbuckle, <laughs> who explains that this is not the first time this has happened. In yep. fact, it seems the only people targeted in these attacks are humans and dwarves. Okay. The attacks only stopped when an alliance marshal started investigating the area. Mm. Futzbuckle suggests players should travel to a port town to try and catch oh, the, the orc. people who yeah. did this. And when players travel to Booty Bay, there's an orc who explains that she was a mercenary hired to attack those alliance members in Desolus, mm. and the person that hired her left to go to their secret hideout in Arathi Highlands once the alliance marshals started investigating. Yeah. This hideout is a remote location off the coast, separated from the zone. Players find the culprit, Ilari, Ilari Duskfeather. Duskfeather, and ask if she was the one that killed those Alliance citizens. And she says, yes, and oh. she'd do it again. <laughs> Players ask, uh, why? You're yes. a Night Elf, you're also a part of the Alliance. And in response, she goes, Kalimdor belongs to the Kaldori. Okay. I refuse to see it defiled by the lesser races. Dude, I've said this so many times. <laughs> Night Elves are like the most racist race in World of Warcraft. They literally hate anyone that's not Night Elf. Like, no meme. They literally do. Our leaders act as if the Alliance and the Horde are so different, but they debase our lands all the same. Do you not see how the dwarves plunder the earth for all that they can? Yeah. Do you not think the human appetite for expansion will not bring them to the foot of Teldrassil one day? Uh, Blades and torches in hand. Knows. To think, my people bow to those vermin over a few orcish vermin. lumber camps. Pathetic. Mm. If our leaders cannot protect us, then I will do what must be done. Oh shit. <laughs> Forward and Alliance players will then be forced to fight Alari Duskfeather, yeah. which can prove to be difficult because of her down. high level. During the fight, right before she is killed, she vanishes away, mm -hmm. leaving a key on the ground that players can pick up to open a chest which contains a rune. It's but a loot. if you're a night elf, you have a dialogue option where you can agree with Alari's viewpoint and she'll just give really? you the key. And I love this character. You know, I've mentioned in previous videos okay. that there's a distinct disconnect between Night Elves being these prudish, holier-than-thou tree huggers True. in Warcraft 3. And they aren't. They're just nice tree huggers in Warcraft. And I feel like this quest does an awesome job at addressing that. And since no matter what option you pick, Alari survives, mm. I'm sure we'll see her again in the Probably. future phases of Season of Discovery. That's cool. What's this? Oh, the land of the cows. Hiding in Thunder Bluff, there is the a rogue? newly added NPC, oh. unknown to many players. Yeah, this Concealed guy. in stealth, Borton Shade Totem is a Tauren rogue that tasks players with a quest Tauren to sabotage rogue. the local harpies and Venture Co. mercenaries in Molgor. Now, Borton Shade Totem is actually mm. a character introduced in the Dragonflight expansion when rogues really? became an available class to every playable race in the game. Dude, and listen, man. A Tauren rogue... It, it, it really doesn't make sense. All right, like, I'm sorry, dude, but they have hooves, man, and they're so big. It does make sense. It really doesn't, man. There are Tauren pirates. Well, there's a difference between being a pirate and being a rogue. A rogue is like, you know, you gotta be stealthy, you gotta be sneaky. You're like a big cow. Borton Shade Totem is the rogue trainer in Thunderbluff. And the perplexing thing is, is when players talk to him in Season of Discovery, mm. he says, I speak to you from your future. When the Horde faces threats you cannot imagine. Since others cannot see me, 
I rely on you to learn my skills and pass them to the tribe. Yep. Which I guess indicates that not only is Borton Shade Totem a rogue, but he's also a time traveler yep. that has ventured back to the classic WoW timeline to warn players about the next nine World of Warcraft expansions. Oh gosh. How did he manage to travel back in time? Uh, I'm not Probably. really sure, but this also isn't the only instance of time traveling characters within the season of Discovery. Mm -hmm. What else? Hey, what's this? Oh, like for the nips? During each phase of Season of Discovery, players can craft an epic yeah. quality void touched item. During phase one, this involved a Sanitath, long quest yeah. line that took players into the Black Fathom Deeps cool to a secret area underwater to loot an item simply called the box. I think these quest chains for like the gear was so sick. I, I like new content like this little quest change. I think it's super dope, man. It, it's nice. The next part of the quest line involves traveling to the a box. remote area above the Ravenholt Manor in the Hillsbrad Foothills, where there's this giant glowing crystal. Yep. Here, you destroy the box, and what remains after is a void crystal, and then out of nowhere, hmm? a Oop. shadowy figure appears. This shadowy figure is of a female high elf who explains uh -huh. to players that what they hold is a powerful artifact that could be used to their advantage. And I, I really love that they used the old model for the High Elves. Oh my gosh, I actually didn't even realize that it was the old High Elf model. At first, the That's player so character awesome. is apprehensive with the use of such evil. But you can also craft epic quality armor with it, so uh... That's good. Uh, who cares? You know what? Curse Wait, me with what is that? Hold on a second. This little breastplate is kind of... He's showing off the, the... Okay, I didn't. I actually never saw that before. Okay. Uh, who cares? You know what? Curse me with your void knowledge. Goddamn. Now, the speculation amongst the community is that this is Zalatath, a void entity that is going to be one of the main antagonists mm. in the War Within expansion. The, knife, the, the reasoning knife. behind this is that it's a void being in the guise of an elf, and she also has a curvy blade. So the question is, are, are they gonna like intertwine like retail and saw it now? Like, is this actually gonna be a thing? Uh, yeah, that's no pretty idea. much it. But if this is the case, that would mean that she is probably traveling back in time to Think the so? events Looks of like Classic it, yeah. WoW, because during Classic, her essence was bound within the blade of the Black Empire. Mm -hmm. Which makes sense, you know, time travel and void shenanigans oh go hand in hand. Now there is a way that this could be Zalatath during the Classic WoW timeline could that be. doesn't involve time travel, but somehow it's a more... Wait, doing BFA, we found a void artifact and used its power to possess the corpse of an elf to give Zalatath a co Corporal form while she is still being bound within the blade of the Black Empire. It's possible this game would have happened in Classic, I guess, but there is no evidence to that. Dude, where would I be in World of Warcraft lore without Platinum WoW? Like, this guy is, is like a blessing, I swear to God. Trived than time travel. And then during phase two of the Season of Discovery, the shadowy figure returns in the next quest line that mm. involves crafting a piece a novel, of true, epic novel as well. void touched armor. This quest line involves charging a void core. Players find a void core oh, yeah, by killing this. Nagas on an island in Feralos. But this void core isn't charged with power. Yeah, I heard in Musa. order to charge it, you kind of just need to have the void core in your bags and kill any mobs anywhere in the world, and eventually the shadowy figure will appear and offer to charge the crystal for the player. Mm. And in return, she expects the player to help her in the future. The loot-hungry players agree, of course. Of course. So now we are in the shadowy figure's debt, and I'm sure that she'll be returning in the future phases of Season of Discovery yeah, probably. and ask a favor from us. A favor cool which will probably be morally dubious at best. Yeah. Okay, what do we got next? Oh. The Deadwind Pass is an obscure zone within Classic WoW. Okay. It's a barren wasteland you must venture through to get from Duskwood to the Swamp of Sorrows. Yeah. But in Season of Discovery, it's uh, where players travel to begin a worldwide investigation. Yeah. Near the entrance of one of the zones, there's a Dalaran agent who explains that there's been a heist of the city of Dalaran's artifacts. Yep. Somehow, 
some way, they were able to sneak past the giant magical bubble protecting the city to do this. Yep. The Dalaran scryers detected the presence of seven hooded figures on a horseback, matching the legend of the Dark Riders of Karazhan. Yeah. Players are given a trinket, Arden's sigil, in order to detect their dark presence and hunt them down. This the is really cool, man. Like these random little like quest chains. I know some people find them really tedious, but I like them, and I guess there's some lore to it too, right? The legend of the Dark Riders is a tragic one. Long ago, a group oh. of charlatan merchants, led by a man named Arden, settled in Deadwind Pass. Really? And these swindling salesmen approached the Tower of Karazhan, where Medivh, the guardian, exactly, and the most powerful mage in Azeroth lived. Oh. And they tried to convince him to buy these totally fake, not oh, magical, magical shit. artifacts. Little did they know, Medivh had gone mad possessed by the demonic yep. titan Sargeras, and he cursed these charlatans, turning them into the Dark Riders, and they've haunted Azeroth ever since in search of real, priceless artifacts. Oh, that's cool. Now, the Dark Riders have been mentioned in passing ever since Classic WoW. Wait, really? He fled before I could catch him, and I couldn't linger for I was hot in the heels of the Dark Riders. Yeah, it's kind of like the Nazgul's of Lord of the Rings in a way. Wait, so the, the lore is actually in vanilla? For the Dark Riders as well. That's actually kind of cool. You don't know Sven's story? Not fully, no. I mean, I've done a lot of... Um, I've, I've done a, Whenever I leveled Gussie, I actually did a lot of, like, reading of the quest and stuff like that. But apart from that, from my hardcore, like, journeys in, in WoW, I've never really read the quests too much, right? It was there all the time, yeah. But most players probably... You don't... You play Classic for 20 years and don't know any lore? Bro... Listen, man, up until, like, I did my hardcore content for, for, for like, your know, stream and YouTube and stuff, I literally never read a quest. I literally just open the quest, click accept, go on the, go on the map where it tells me to go. Right? But I actually really did enjoy, like, reading through the quest and, like, immersing myself more into the game when I was uh, doing hardcore stuff. It was actually really fun. Remember them in the Legion expansion because they play a key role in the artifact weapon quest lines for the weapons Apocalypse, yeah. the Scythe of Elune, and Euthalesh. But in Season of Discovery, Arden's Sigil helps players track down each of these riders, and they mm. might need some help from other players to kill them because of their elite status. Yeah, You'll have to sick. travel to Deadwind Pass, the Swamp of Sorrows, Duskwood, Badlands, Arathi Highlands, the Barrens, and Desolus. That's a lot of places. So it's a very travel-intensive process. Yeah. But when players return to the Dalaran Agent, they will be rewarded with one of their class rooms. Very nice. And probably really sore feet. And yep. this quest is just yet another sprinkle of lore to experience. Yep. But it isn't the only new content that involves a ridiculous amount of walking. Okay. Is it the sleeping bag? The sleeping bag ah, questline is it. a newly added piece of content that I rewards knew it. players with, well... A sleeping bag that gives you an XP bonus. Cool I'm quest. I'm sure if you've played Season of Discovery, you've done it before, but hey, let's be honest. Uh, did you actually read the quest text? Season of Wowhead. Let's be honest, chat. I mean, that's what most people goddamn did, okay? I will just say, though, actually, I haven't looked up any of the data mine content of, like, Phase uh, 3 so far, okay? We've actually avoided it, all right? Apart from the the video that Blizzard uh, like released on their YouTube channel, uh, I haven't been looking stuff up. Uh, no, of course you did. So this adventure starts in Westfall, where you find yep. a scene of burnt remnants and a note that says. Yeah, I did see the the Guza reference, but that's because people kind of like, you know, spammed it in my chat, so I I, I saw it that way. People Not all that burns is lost. Find the twin land. Fine place. Yeah, it's that location. That, is that's a really, really big thing for me, man. I think that's so cool. On the other side of the world, in the Barrens, where we find a similar scene of burnt remains. Yeah. Here, another note reads: The mission said they were both making deliveries for new plague. Looks mm. like simple apothecary accidents to me. Find my cozy spot in the mountains between the Barrens and Desolus if you want a safe place to talk. Yep. This new plague is a chemical gas that the Undead Apothecary Society was concocting that is most well known Ooh. for being used in the Wrathgate cinematic yeah, that's what in they the do. Wrath of the Lich King expansion. But really, the Undead loved using this stuff for the whole expansion. I don't know but also, this actually. new plague was mentioned in multiple quests in Classic WoW. 
Like in the Hillsbrad Foothills, where you help mm -hmm. a member of the oh, Royal Apothecary. Oh, yeah, that's where you killed the little, the little toad and you killed the dog as well. ...society, who says, and I quote, I look out my grimy window and long for the days our new plague brings this world the death it deserves. Dude, what the and hell? And then you force feed it to a dog and kill it. Yep. Uh, God, I just love when Forsaken are so comically edgy and yep. evil. Okay, sorry, I uh, I got distracted there. So when you're doing the sleeping bag quest, Acro, thank you, you travel from the Stone Talon Mountains to the Loch Madan Dam, and then there's another note stating that the rider is loyal to the Eagle and Fist, which is the symbol of the Kingdom of Stromgard. Oh. You get more hints that lead you to Thoradin's Wall, and there is another note that states that this mysterious rider must take his work back underground so it doesn't fall into the wrong okay. hands. And at this little base camp, <laughs> players get their sleeping bag. Ah, comfy. And uh, that's the end of the quest. But keen players will realize that they're being watched. Yeah, I saw this when we did the quest, man. There is some, like, I don't remember the name. Like, uh, there, there's some people watching you, basically. Look at one of the sections of yes. Thoradin's wall, and you'll spot two yes. secret agents Dude. spying on you. And one is tagged as a beast, and they're also level 77, so yeah. maybe they're part... It's the furries. It's the goddamn furries, man. Part of the SI7 the agents beasts. from Stormwind? But wait, it gets weirder. These secret agents are all around Azeroth, wait, spying on the player from afar. As far Wait, as this I didn't know actually. What? As I know, there are four different locations. There's one here at Thoradin's Wall. Wait, really? Another on a seemingly random island in the Swamp of Sorrows. Another by the Duswell Marsh Inn. And also on a that. pillar overlooking the Old Man Cave entrance. I only knew about the one in, uh, at the sleeping bag quest. And when you approach any of them, they just say, we've got friends. And then they just d disappear. Like, what? Who the what? fuck are these guys? Are they just an Easter egg? A clue to a hidden secret in the season of Discovery? Wait, yeah, that's discovered. Uh, well, I've got a theory. Perhaps, maybe... Just maybe, okay. these characters are added by Blizzard in order to integrate the Men in Black <laughs> franchise into the Warcraft universe. That's right, just hear me out. Will Smith and the no wacky way. aliens are now canon. I mean, it just Yo. perfectly fits within the season Wait. too. These secret agents will use their mic wiping device called a Neuralizer to wipe our Season of Discovery characters' minds yeah. so they unlearn all of the runes and then they can be integrated back into the original Classic WoW servers yeah. with no memory of the new abilities that they learned what? during the Season of Discovery. It's such a crazy idea that it might just work. <laughs> Dude, honestly, that could work, man. Because everybody keeps asking always, like, what's going to happen to our characters once Season of Discovery is done? Yeah, man, the men in black comes out and they flash your eyes and then you go to the arrow servers. And then they make Classic Plus. With all the information gathered throughout Season of Discovery. Yeah. Damn. Dude, what a cool video, though. I like that a lot. What other new Bobbits in lore would you have to meet cover next? I think it's just fun seeing seeing um, Platinum while going over this stuff. Because, like, I mean, I know some of it, but, like, he explains it in such a nice way that's so digestible, man. To be fair, I would defend my land against those old dwarf models, too. Okay, dude. The quest lore is a very fitting for vanilla. Actually surprised it didn't budge it. I think, I think it's really great, honestly. Bro, it's the little things to separate you from the other lore creators. The subtle playing of the box is the perfect example. I just, I think his his editing, his like funny little like, his little jokes he, he weaves in sometimes are really good too. I feel like some creators, like some videos, like the jokes and like whenever they, they try to be funny, it can come off really tacky. But he does it in a very, very good way. Like he, he, he like weaves in like some good jokes and some memes and stuff, which is really sick.